So it seems that recently Amazon changed the way that their bot protection works and if you do it the normal way you get hit with a sign in page shortly after making a few requests. Now I'm sure there is a good way around this but before we kind of dive into that I want to show you a working example using Playwright. So it is much slower but it's still perfectly usable I think and I do use this particular web scraping method quite a lot for other pages so you'll be able to take this and transport it over to any other site that you won't be working on. So we're going to import in first we'll do from uh, playwright.sync API import in sync playwright and we're going to do from selectolax.parser import the HTML parser. The Selectolax is my favorite HTML parser. I'll leave a link, go and check it out. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to understand what we're trying to achieve. We're going to take a list of ASINs and we're going to use the same page in Playwright so we're not closing down and opening the browser each time so it's a bit quicker to go to that page and then grab some of the data from it and just spit it back out into our terminal. So the first thing that we want to do is think about how we're going to do this. So with Sync Playwright, if I show you the information over here, we're actually going to be using the uh, this version here. So we're not going to be using the context manager. We're going to do it like this because we can now split this part up into different bits. So it will uh, make our lives a bit easier when we get going. So let's have a first function. We'll call this one get HTML and then we'll have a run function and then we'll have our main function and then we'll have our if name is equal to main not not there though let's move it to where it should be and we're going to run main i have a main and a run function not totally necessary but I, I think it's kind of useful so what we're going to do is we'll actually start here and the run function so this is going to have the first part of our playwright here so we need to have our playwright sync playwright start i'm just going to paste this in from the documentation i'm actually going to call this pw for short and then we need our browser is going to be equal to pw dot and we'll use chromium dot launch and then our page is going to be equal to browser dot new page like it shows us on the right hand side of the page screen so now we have up to this page part here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to this get html function we're going to pass in the page and the asin that we're going to take it from the product probably grab that from a csv in a bit so then we can do page dot go to and we'll give it a URL, uh, which we'll construct here in just a second. And then we're going to say our HTML is going to be equal to the HTML parser for page.content. And this is kind of the main crux of it here. Page.content, there we go. And we'll return this HTML out. So what this is basically going to do is we're going to use Playwright to load the page and then we're going to send that HTML page back into our HTML parser from Selectolax so we can then pass it much easier. You can of course use Playwright's um, element selectors but I don't do that at all. I much prefer using a proper parser and sending the HTML back. And that's done with this page.content here that we just typed in. So let's make sure we got the correct URL um, and we just need the first part here. Okay. So like this and then you do DP and then we can put in the ASIN into our URL here. And we need to make this an F string like this. So now the ASIN that we send through this function is going to be put into the URL here and we're going to return the HTML. So now we can pass it. So let's have our pass HTML function and this is just going to have the HTML and we're also going to give it the ASIN because that's going to follow it all the way through. So I'm going to use data classes in a minute to actually take the information from the page just so we have a neater way of handling everything and that's going to involve passing the ASIN through here as well. So let's say to start with, let's just print out html.css first and we'll just do title for now so we know that it works, dot text like this. 
Cool, and I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna format with black, just to neaten everything up, there we go. Now we can put into our run function, we can have our get HTML. So let's say the HTML is gonna be equal to the get HTML function. I need to use, stop using get in my names. And we're gonna pass in the page, which is browser.new page. So that's part of the, this is the Chromium page that we've just loaded up with Playwright controlling it. And we wanna give it the ASIN2, which I need to go ahead. And I'm just gonna copy one in for now, just so it, for testing and um, there we go that will do so now we're giving it this and then we can let's just pass HTML on our HTML that we have just downloaded and of course I said we need to give it the ASIN as well so let's print out the title and just to check that this is all working fine we'll print out the ASIN as well okay so now we just need to let's put in the run into our main function um, I think what we might do is we might put our CSV loading in the main function as well and pass it into our run and then loop that way. That might be the tidiest way. Okay, so this should work. Let's do Python 3 working.py and we should now get a title come up of the page that we loaded. There we go. So it is quite slow the first time around because it's loading that browser on the page, but because we're using the same browser and we're just reloading the page each time, it will be a little bit quicker than that each time going forward. However, it is slower than the original method, but you know, you've got, you've got to work with what you can do. So let's go back into our code. I keep wanting to type main, but I've called this one working for some reason. There we go. Right. So now we want to think about what data we want to get out. And then we want to think about importing from a products.csv, the ASINs maybe. So let's get data classes in here because so these are a great way to handle your data and they are essentially free because they are already in the standard library. So let's have a class of item and the first thing we're going to want is an ASIN which is going to be a string. Then the title of the product we'll grab as well and then the price. I'm going to put this in as a string as well now. We're not going to focus on handling the data or doing anything with it. We're just going to concentrate on getting it and having it in a presentable format which is what data class is going to do for us. So in the pass function now, we want to create our new item, which is gonna be an instance of our item here. And we can now construct this with the ASIN, which is gonna be equal to the ASIN. Now we wanna get the title. So the title is gonna be equal to html.css first to get the first instance of this that it finds. I'm just gonna quickly grab the selector for this uh, span ID product title cool span dot uh, ID span ID product title like this dot text and we can do strip is equal to true select relax has that in there for us and finally the price which is going to be equal to html.css first and I know this one it is a span with a dash off screen dot text and again strip is equal to true so that's not going to get in our way save that remove these print statements that we don't need and let's return the item out of this function so this first function is going to get the page and it's going to load it using the asin that we give it and then we're going to be able to pass it like this so now i need to store the information, the item that comes out of this in a new variable. And let's just print the product out here. Okay, so I am gonna put in rich. So I'm gonna do from rich import print. It's up to you whether you do this. I like this because I use a terminal for everything. So it just, just makes everything easier to see. Let's save and run again. See what we did wrong that we need to fix. Hopefully nothing. Okay, perfect, there we go. So you can see that we now have our neat, tidy item data class with the ASIN that we've given it, the long title, I don't know, just too much, and then the price, and uh, I don't think I'll be buying this camera anytime soon. No worries there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a way of importing in from CSV a list of ASINs and tidy this up. So let's put it here, so we'll say, uh, load 
products. Actually, we call this read CSV because it's a bit more clear of what it does. I'm going to hard code the file name. Um, it's up to you if you do this or not. We'll just call it products.csv. We want to open it as read and as f. And our CSV, let's call this reader, is equal to csv.reader on f. And then we can return out a new list. I'm going to use list comprehension for this. And it's going to be item. And because when we do this this way, we need to index it because it's going to give us a list each time. So item, oh, it's gone a bit crazy. Item, uh, first index for item in reader, like so. Now we just need to import in our CSV. So import CSV and come back down to our function. And now we can create this file. So we'll do nearvim products.csv and we want to grab some ASINs. So we will carry on using this one. Why not? There we go. And let's get another one. Any other more, more expensive Canon cameras? Well, here's a, here we go. Let's grab this one. It doesn't matter. It's like I'm actually trying to shop here. I'm definitely not doing that. Well, let's, let's put in this actually. I think this just came out. Uh, 6700. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that's not the right one. Where's the 6700 gone? Or is it not that? No worries. I'm waffling. Let's grab the ASIN for this and put it in here as well. Okay. <laughs> right. Great. Let's go back to our working file and let's just double check that are uh, products, let's call it ASINs, is equal to read CSV, and we'll just print the ASINs like so, and this will tell us if we worked, if it's worked. So if you don't do that item index zero, you actually get a list within a list, which is why I did it like that. Okay, so that's cool. So now we have a list of ASINs. We can now make use of the fact that we have a run function, which is going to be now taking in our ASIN. We're gonna give it and we're gonna delete this line. And we can make use of this here. So we can do for ASIN in ASINs. We can then run on this ASIN here and get rid of that. And this just makes the whole thing much neater rather than having everything in that one main function. Format with black close and let's run it and we should get those three bits of information with the price etc etc okay that didn't work so this actually so that error will happen if you actually don't close the browser and stop it at the end you'll end up with it saying you need to use the async api because you have multiple browsers open but actually what you need to do is um, if you're not using async is to do the browser.close and the playwright pw.stop so this all gets going and we can actually carry on and work through it. So let's run it again. Now we should get this three bits of information. Here's the first one, ridiculously expensive camera. Okay, so there we go, that's some three done. Now it's not particularly quick, but it's not bad, especially if you're just trying to grab some information, maybe it's for a personal project or maybe you're just learning and you wanna use this method. Because of course this method of using Playwright to load the page and send back the HTML to then pass with Selectolax or Beautiful Soup is a common thing and is a good one to know how to do. So, so if you've enjoyed this video, you wanna check out my Patreon page because I'll show you how I actually scaffolded this all out and that how I ran through it, that's all on there. Plus there's gonna be a load more community posts on there coming up too. So definitely go check that out, link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, all helps. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.